<laughs> okay. A lot of fun here. Yes. Uh, I just, uh, I buttoned that back up because no, that was, that was silly, Dan. Could have been a style <laughs> setter. See, I had this on. What? I thought that was... I this. have to be... Somebody dresses me when I dress like this. I can't... I, can't, I don't know how to dress like this. So, so I have... So you uh, need a keychain, huh? I have another person come over. Jack Lord comes over. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I had this, uh... Hanging and it was, and, it, and I felt, you know, silly with this. Well, that looks so right. I took this off and I left this unbuttoned, and of course you had to make right. a remark. I just thought it. I, mean, uh, I just thought it was something new that yeah, you were. It could uh, be, uh, you know, it could be that I'm very well built and I'm going to the job. <laughs> okay, moving along. My next guest you saw earlier. She's our very own matinee lady, and she's in a movie called Scavenger Hunt, which is now filming. Not right this moment, because she's here. And you, well, obviously, she, you know. Right. Well, I mean, currently it is in production, as they say. All those movie terms I'm, I'm not hmm. familiar with. And she's, gonna, she's doing a lot, a lot of new commercials and stuff, and uh, we're going to ask her to come out here. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Carol Wayne. <laughs> How are you, dear? Nice. I'm very nice. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Did you meet Mrs. Uh, Carter? Yes, backstage? the first mother, of course. Yeah. What'd you say to her? Did you get nervous when you meet somebody like that? No, I adored her. I think she's really on the ball, you know? I think yeah. she's a real cutie pie. Yeah. Well, sometimes people, you know, get a little tongue-tied and don't exactly know what to, know what to say. Oh, I'm not that way. No. Okay. Have you, have you met before? N Carol and I? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. Do I know you? It was a weekend in Pasadena. I, well, I can't imagine you two having met. No, not I, we haven't met, actually. No, we haven't met. No. But I, I haven't remember. met. <laughs> I would remember. Haven't? We haven't met. No. I mentioned you were... Go ahead, Bert. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, it's your show. <laughs> I, um... I mentioned you were busy doing some, uh, some commercials. Yes. I've been very busy. Have I'm... I seen these on the air? Well, have you been watching? I watch a certain amount of television, yeah, because I have to... You know, I'm in the business, and I yeah. check it occasionally, see what's happening. Obviously, you didn't see me. Well, or me, you would have remembered, right? Right, I would have remembered. <laughs> Can I ask what commercials they were, or you yes, want to talk about them? I or... did a um, uh, beer commercial with uh -huh. uh, George Burns and Jack Klugman and me. I buttoned them up. I learned this new phrase. When you're at the end, you button them up. And I did that. That's all right. You just... Just help yourself there. <laughs> okay. And I did a blue bonnet commercial. Margarine. What's blue? That's a margarine. Yes. I did it with uh, Reggie Jackson and Hermione Gingold and... This is a typical family. <laughs> no, her... <laughs> Reggie Jackson, Hermione Gingold, and you. And now, there's, Joe a, there's a Quinella. And Joe Fraser. And, Fraser. and, Joe Fraser. and ah. me and, and Abe Bogota. Oh, And we yeah. all had to wear the blue bonnet. Your average family, yeah. yeah. You were all covered in margarine? <laughs> no, I had to spread it on... Um, whole wheat, carrot, protein, toast. And they gave me a cup of coffee, and I said, could I have a glass of milk if I'm supposed to be spreading this on such healthy stuff? They said, no, Joe Frazier had the glass of milk. I said, are they going to mix me up with Joe Frazier? Couldn't yeah. I have milk, too? But Wouldn't think so, well. I had coffee. It was a rather low-budget commercial, obviously, and there's one glass of milk for the cast. What's the movie? Was I right? Scavenger Hunt? Is that yeah. the name of it? And you're currently doing that? No, I did it. Um, it's with a lot of people. <laughs> Isn't that still like doing it? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> you buttoned it up. I buttoned it up. You buttoned it up. Yeah. We wrapped, wrapped it up. Wrapped yeah. it up. Wrapped. Um, it's with a lot of people like uh, Richard Benjamin and Robert Morley and Cloris Leachman and Ruth Gordon and James Coco. And I'm a nurse. And I have a patient, Vincent Price. And um, we're playing a game in bed and he dies. <laughs> Okay, what are you folks working on? <laughs> uh, and he, he dies. We were playing leapfrog. <laughs> yeah. 
could lead to death, I suppose. Yeah. He loses, and he's a bad sport. Yeah. Sounds like a kind of a strange movie. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah. yeah but you They're ended, still doing you? it. Yeah, but I only well, did... I just said they were doing it, and you said they weren't doing it. Oh, but I did it already. I'm not coming back. I did my part. So, and... so when I said they're still doing it, they're still doing it. Are they? <laughs> you know who else was in the movie? Uh, Tony Randall. And he said to me, Carol, I'd like to see you in my dressing room. I thought, oh, no, not Tony Randall. You know how he says it so with authority? Yes. And I wasn't born every minute, so I said, let's keep the door open. And he said, okay. He came in, he said, how serious are you about your acting? I said, oh, I'm not serious at all. I have all my parts. I never go out looking for parts. They just come and get me. Really, I'm not serious. I went for one acting lesson with my manager, Ray Slivers. You remember him? And I, I went to this famous acting coach, and he had me go, uh, seduce me, seduce me, seduce me. And I went, uh-huh. And I said to Mr. Slivers, do you know what you paid $50 for? And that's the last acting lesson I had. And I said, that's it. He said, good, because with your voice, you will always play the parts of idiots. <laughs> I said, uh-huh. He said, um, everybody has two voices, and you've chosen not to develop your other voice. You are a body of a woman with the voice of a child. He said, and only your analyst would know why that's true. And I said, oh, I don't have one of those either. He said, aha, that's the other voice. I just heard it. He, and so he gave me the name of this lady who's an act, uh, voice teacher, and he yeah. said, he, she probably won't teach you because she has very serious students. So when I think about it, everything he said to me was real rotten. But I was very impressed because he like took his. He was showing an interest in it. Yes, he was, and I loved it. So I went and I called the lady, and she said, "Oh, okay, you come to the Sanford again." Oh. <laughs> anyway, I don't have another voice. She Did said, you "Have you tried?" Yes, she teaches you how to find the holes in your head, like right here, to keep your mouth open. Right. Important. Very yeah. important. And then you stand against the wall and you put your hands here so you can hear where your air goes. Uh, why, did, why did you quit? I didn't quit. I still have one more lesson coming. Is she trying to lower your voice? No, she said this is it. In other words, you don't have another voice. Nope. Did you? He's, I can't wait to see Tony Randall. He is full of puckery. Yeah. 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 He sure is. He knows where the air goes. Yeah. <laughs> Where's all the air going? Where's the air going? <clears throat> Did you hear Miss Lillian said something about a two-story outhouse? And you just let that go right by. Um, you know, I know didn't you wonder about what it was like to be on the bottom I didn't story? Know. <laughs> but when you're talking with the president's mother, you don't bring those kind of things up. That's why I brought it up now. That's right. You wouldn't have done that either if she was out here. Okay, we'll do this. We're going to come right back. So you gave up the voice lessons, and that was yes. it. I've been to France. And you'd never been I to... got my pants in France. No, they're, they're kind of gold. Would you, is that lamé, or what do they call that? Or... I don't know. They're real hot, though. I don't think they breathe, you know? Yeah. I bet they don't last long. Really? I bet you never send these to the cleaners, you know what I mean? Probably not. Have you worn them before? No, I've never sat down on them before. Oh, they're, look. Oh, they're very pretty. They're Thank good. you. Very pretty. Kind of an Earl Scheib job. Yeah. <laughs> In by nine, out by five. All right. Uh, yes. What did you put... What did he want? Man wants to know. This is obviously some... This is like, let's make a deal. This That's right. <laughs> Man thinks he's going to win an oven or something. Yeah. Uh, her measurements are... Uh... Her business. Forbiddenness. 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 That's right. Forbiddenness. It's nice to see you again. Thank really. you. Really. Hope you come back with us again soon. Of course I will. All right. And Bert, thanks for dropping. Thank you, Really. And I. Oh, it's great. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Miss Lillian Carter again for being a guest with us tonight. It was, it was a lot of fun. Fascinating. And tomorrow night, we have. The Skylab coming down right now. <laughs> Tomorrow night we have Elizabeth Ashley, Buck Henry, <laughs> jazz artist Chuck Mangione, and Sidney Goldsmith. And the old clock on the wall. <laughs> <laughs>